I'm Karen Stewart, physician assistant, and we're going to talk about non-surgical management of prolapse with pessaries. The first option that patients have in concern to management of their prolapse is expectant management. If a patient is asymptomatic or does not like alternative treatment options, it is okay to treat prolapse conservatively with expectant management. Two things that are important to rule out are urinary retention. If the patient's anterior vaginal wall comes outside of the introitus, it's pertinent that you check to make sure that they empty their bladder completely before you encourage them to proceed with expectant management. The other issue is ulcerations on the prolapse. Once the vaginal wall is outside of the vagina, they are at risk for having ulcerations on that tissue, and this can become an issue for them with bleeding. So how do you pick what kind of pessary to use? It really is trial and error. In my opinion, it's better to have one fallout than one that is too large that causes pain. There are different shapes and sizes. The most preferred pessary to use is a ring pessary. Most likely this is because it's easiest to get in and out, especially if the patient wants to manage the pessary themselves. There are some problems with the ring pessary though. Sometimes it will not stay in or the prolapse can come down around the pessary. Usually a ring pessary does not work well if they have a widened genital hiatus. The genital hiatus is the link between the urethral meatus to the posterior introitus. If this is greater than 5 centimeters, you can predict that it would be hard to use a ring pessary and sometimes it's hard to use any type of pessary. If you do have a widened genital hiatus, I would consider using a space occupying pessary such as a gale horn or a cube pessary. Gellhorn pessaries are good for apical and uterovaginal prolapse. Technically, they're more difficult to get in and out, especially if the patient wants to manage it themselves. However, it can be done. Cube pessaries are also uh, space occupying pessaries. They work better if you have the widened genital hiatus. They can be managed by the patient, but again, it can be more difficult to get in and out than the ring. With Q pessaries, you generally have more issues with patients complaining about vaginal discharge and odor. Another issue with Q pessaries is because of the edges on the pessary, you may see more ulcerations. Once you have found the right pessary for your patient, you have to discuss maintenance of that pessary. How you maintain the pessary depends on the patient's preference. Some patients do not want to take their pessaries out and clean them themselves. However, some patients do not like frequent office visits and would prefer to do it themselves. The most ideal situation for pessary care is for the patient to remove the pessary themselves every night before they go to bed, clean it, and then replace it in the morning. The reason that this is more ideal is because they're less likely to have problems with ulcerations or foul-smelling vaginal discharge. They can be followed up in the office every 6 to 12 months because the risk of ulceration is low if they only wear the pessary for part of the day. You will have several patients that do not want to manage the pessary themselves. Sometimes it's technically difficult for them to get it in and out. If this is the case, the patients must be examined on a frequent basis every 6 to 8 weeks to ensure that they do not have any vaginal ulcerations from the pessary being in place. If left unattended, ulcerations in the vagina from pessaries can develop into fistulas. I recommend the use of a vaginal estrogen replacement with the use of a pessary. This reduces the risk of ulcerations. It also helps with the amount of vaginal discharge if you do have an issue with a patient having ulcerations due to their pessary, I would recommend leaving the pessary out for two to three weeks to allow that ulceration to heal before the pessary was replaced. From time to time, you will have to adjust the patient's pessary size. Sometimes they will need a smaller or larger one throughout their course of treatment. There are also pessaries available for incontinence as well.